So if you watch my video at the Bite and Reveal, you know I was a little skeptical about the Bite and M Bite, partly because of all of the technology behind the wheel in this car. I mean, this car's got more screen real estate than than my TV at home. But Dre here from Byton is going to try and convince me that this is exactly what I need in the future car from Byton. Now, I am a driver's driver. I like cars that have a connection to the road, cars that aren't overly technical. I love electric vehicles. I mean, that's what I've cut my teeth on. I've been driving electric since 2006, 2007. Mm -hmm. But do I really need this much technology in my next EV? So I appreciate the question. You may do not, but for us, it is exactly the right way to go ahead, right? So that's the Biden way uh, to provide the experience uh, to our future customers. I think you're right with your concerns about real estate and technology in terms of if you just have that for the sake of having that. What we're trying to achieve here is not uh, adding more screens. What we want to do is we want to give a very unique and tailored digital experience for our users, right? And I'm saying users, not drivers, users while they're on the road. So why do I say that? Why are you on the road? That means not necessarily you drive all the time. The reality is, and I share that with you, I love my car and I love driving, right? And you get the good news. You can do that with a Biden too. Pretty good, by the way. We have our pre-production car ready for you guys, I think, so too. Yeah, I think Kate's um, going to be checking it out. Get your hands on that and uh, figure that out. It's a very good SUV, an electric vehicle SUV. The reality is that we're ending up in traffic. My personal commute, for example, the, the car is not designed for me, by the way, but I'm telling you, my, my reality is I'm spending almost two hours in traffic on my way from home to the office. I live in San Francisco and I have to go down to Santa Clara twice a day, two hours Ew. straight. Right. It's tough. And what I want to do while I'm driving, as much as I admire driving, I don't want to care about driving. Do we need a screen for manually driving in this size and fashion? The answer is maybe not. And if you look carefully at the screen, you can see the information unit here, or the amount of information is pretty reduced. Right? Right. It's not that much on right. My goal is to keep your eyes on the road in the first place, even with this huge display. If you look at the screen here right now very carefully, you can see that it actually appears more like a digital paper than your TV at home. Right, and I must admit the the resolution of this is in, in, appears very high. Yeah, the, I think the, the DPI. Yes, the, the the quality is really sharp. It's pretty. Also, the distance is quite far. It's not close. It's not like here or something. It's actually quite far away and closer to the road it feels. So the information here on my driver display, um, it's actually reduced. There's not really content here. The reasoning is. This is not a touch display. Firstly, it's far away, and the idea is like, no, we don't want to have that too close, and you know, in case right. of a head impact and so forth. Now I need something to interact with this thing. The easiest way to interact with something which is like a TV is a remote control, which we have at home for our TV. Right. right? right. So we applied the same principles to this interaction model. Mm -hmm. So look, if I open the, uh, the media application, what it does, it opens huh. a little list, and now this display here in front of me turns into a trackpad. Right. I don't have to look at this. I can actually use it blindly. And I'm saying blindly very carefully because I want you to actually focus yeah, yeah. on the road. Every time when you do not use an application, for example, for six seconds, I take information you do not need out of the way. Right. So now look, what you have is an in instrument cluster, very nicely designed, very easy to read. Right? and your artwork of your music you have chosen. That's right. it. The moment right. you start interacting with it, I give you back your playlist and you can select another song. But see, the behavior is that I actually lift up the content underneath that panel. So your eyes don't wander around. I can actually use that thing without really looking at it. So yeah. that is safety, right? Um, and this is the way how it is designed. Presumably at night time, the screen darkens yes. to give you a, oh, a, yeah. a, a better Absolutely. So let me show that um, to you. So I, have, can, I, I can change that here manually, but the system is actually able to change depending on the light condition in daytime, mm -hmm. and it will switch into the dark mode is what we call it. I can do that here manually. That means also user will do that or able to do that anytime. We are going to deploy the software in relationship to your chosen interior. 
So that's for design people really important, I feel like, because blue is a cold color. Right. If you have chosen a white interior or a blue one, that maybe fits very nicely. But if you have a beige one, not maybe so much, not. Right? right? So we're gonna deploy it then in beige. That would be connected to your VIN, but you can also change it whatever you prefer. Right, so, right. Hmm. I've got to say, I really like the, the sweeping design of the front of the, uh, of the M-Byte. I'm a fan of cars that don't have anything in this front wheel space because it gives you more yeah. more leg room mm -hmm. and it makes the cabin feel a whole lot uh, more open. Yeah, then let's switch gears and go and park because then it is really, really nice to sit in here and you can see what we can do with the screen. Yeah. Because, you know, look, uh, in the future we may have other features which supports manually driving and makes it uh, safer and maybe uh, up to a level three and so forth and you can use all these features even while you're on the road and driving. Uh, autonomously or to whatever fashion but if you park and you maybe charge with an electric vehicle a common thing you have the option to either leave the car and go to a restaurant or go to a gym or do a hike or whatever you need to do or you sit in a car and spend your time here and be for example produ productive and join a video conference call mm -hmm. uh, so we're gonna announce our partners mm -hmm. in the next few weeks for our video conference experience okay uh, so this is a place or whatever this is a, stuff you can imagine right so you can share your screen you can read yeah. uh, you can join a conversation you see your people they see you so you can see that that makes totally sense now what you just mentioned is not only that you have a nice room space or a feet uh, a space for your legs and so forth you can just like you know chill out and you know I have to tell you I would potentially have my meetings in this car over my shared office yeah in yeah. Santa Clara, you know what I mean, because yeah. I can actually really listen and understand what they're saying. I can say um, and talk to my people here. It's very nice. I've met lots of people over the years who love their cars, who drive their cars a lot. But I often am surprised at how many people don't understand how their vehicles work. I'm not talking about the nuts and bolts of how the engine operates or how the motors mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about they don't know where the functions are on their car. You know, I, I regularly meet people who don't know how to use their cruise control. Yeah. I regularly meet people who don't really understand autonomous assistance features, mm -hmm. semi-autonomous assistance yeah. features. Yeah. <clears throat> In building a vehicle that's so app-centric, that's so centered on a digital lifestyle, do you risk having a, a car that people buy, but then which doesn't actually use its full potential and is that something that you are all okay with is it is this a car that you're going to have to be tech centric to use um i don't think so right you know look my my, my goal as ux designer is to make this intuitive as possible yes it is complex there's a lot of complexity in there i have a long very long history of discussions with engineers and providers and service providers and so forth um, come up with technologies and what they mainly do is like they're looking like in this vertical like right I have this feature and this can do this and I think so okay but how how would that even work horizontally speaking right, right? right. so because that is my approach I don't look into verticals I want to have a holistic experience I want to make this intuitive as possible so that technology supports you and you don't have to be educated to use it. Let's, let's go full circle. I'm coming back to this. I'm entering this as a car driver. Mm -hmm. I've not seen anything yet in, the, in this display that's made me go, oh, I'm sitting behind the wheel of a car. How traditional can you make this look? Because <laughs> there must be, it's all customizable, right? Yeah. So, so how close I, I imagine lots of people that I could put behind the wheel of this who would freak out mm -hmm. because they'd be like, well, where is this? Where is that? And I can see the speedometer and I can see my state of charge and I can see the autonomous features, right? Mm -hmm. With the, 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 the driver assistance telling me where other vehicles are mm -hmm. on the road. Mm -hmm. But how close to a traditional dashboard can I make this look? And I know that sounds really stupid, but from a transitional point of view. Yeah, I, think that's, I don't think that this question is stupid. I don't think that I can really help you with this because that's not the goal right right we want to break that really okay. with purpose and I'm not here to design it in a way that you feel like you sit in like an um, whatever a 1971 Mercedes or something right whatever. right that's not it this is a different way I admit but yeah. this done with purpose we want to be different we have to be different 
We have to find our niche as Byton, and I think this is our way to succeed. And that's a great way to end it. Thanks, Dre. <laughs> it's been fantastic to experience this firsthand. I must admit, I was skeptical when I first came and sat down. I can see the benefit and the draw of this massive display and these touchscreens here. Mm -hmm. The work that you've all done on the steering wheel is fantastic. You can't see this, but the steering wheel moves, but the display stays put, the airbag is underneath. It does feel quite intuitive. I do like designs of vehicles with, with very minimal switches and gauges and dials because I like that minimalist feel. Yeah. And I think I was worried that this much technology would take away from that minimalist feel. Is it a car that I'm going to want to drive and buy? Well, I'm going to want to drive it. Uh, is it one I'm going to want to buy? Maybe the jury's out on that one right now. But as you say, this is about creating a new way of doing things in the automotive industry. It's not copying any other automakers that exist. It's about trying to be different. And I think in Byton's home market in China, that's going to be very important. I think it's also going to be very important in the West as well. So thank you very much, Dre. Thank you for it. Thanks for watching. We'll be back soon with more content. But until then, keep evolving.